Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. I'm a health and wellness as well as culinary coach. I work with patients at a lifestyle medical practice and I run support groups and I love to try new recipes. A friend of mine, Rebecca, uh, shared at one of the groups that she has a banana bread that is light and airy and basically whole food plant-based, uh, vegan. And I wanted the recipe and she shared it. So thank you, Rebecca. And what I'm going to be showing you is are the steps to make this. I'll bake it, I'll show you the finished product in a photo or maybe I'll come back on video. But let me get this started because I want to create a flax egg. Do you know what that is? It's a tablespoon of flax with two tablespoons of water or milk, and it creates a viscous uh, kind of a paste that acts like an egg in a recipe. So I am, the, the recipe calls for uh, plant milk. I happen to like soy milk. I like boosting the protein with soy milk, and I like the other properties of soy. And so I'm going to put half of the amount of soy milk the recipe calls for into the flax and mix it whoops wrong end of my cute little whisk there and you're going to see see right now it's quite liquid and it's it's ground flax okay we'll let this sit i'm going to say 10 15 minutes while i talk to you about other things and until i need it so, did I, ooh, got to start my oven. I'm using my Breville hot air oven for this. I'm using the bake function. And I have oat flour. Well, you can buy oat flour. Um, I would always use organic because they heavily spray grains with desiccants, which are chemicals that dry them out. And, um, for storage, easier stores, etc. So, um, and you can buy the flour, but you can also buy um, rolled oats. And that's what I do. I buy uh, organic rolled oats that are gluten-free. That means they're not processed in a mill that processes wheat or barley or rye or the other gluten grains. Um, I'm sensitive, I'm not celiac, and I, I don't mess around with it. And to the flour, I'm adding, you can kind of see this, I'm adding cinnamon, I'm also adding baking soda, baking powder, and I'm just whisking that together. Do you remember the days, and a lot of people still do this, when we had sifters? <laughs> I took home ec classes starting in the seventh grade. I always loved to cook. And we had sifters, zip, 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 zip. I don't do that. I, have, I don't even own a sifter anymore. Um, but I'll use a whisk and because I'm working with cinnamon it's really easy to see how well it's distributed because the cinnamon is brown. All right so I'm going to set this aside. This was oat flour, baking soda, baking powder, and cinnamon and now I'm going to show you the main source of sweetness and volume and nutrition, uh, and that is bananas. We use a lot of bananas in whole food plant-based baking. And I use extra ripe bananas. They're the ones that are speckled with black on the skin. I purposely buy more bananas than I need and I wait for them to speckle and sometimes get really, really dark and then I peel them, put them into one quart freeze, freezer bags. Uh, for me, it's a Ziploc freezer bag and they will nestle four in a bag and, or spoon <laughs> four in a bag and um, keep them in the freezer because that allows us to, um, me, to always have uh, bananas ready to be baked. But I just happened to have these three that were nice and dark and I'm gonna mash them. And then we're going to add other um, 
moist ingredients, and then we'll add the flour to that. So I'm going to kind of give them a little whip as well as a mash to get them nice and loose so that the banana isn't chunky and in chunks in the batter, but that the banana is well incorporated. Okay, I think this is good because I can keep doing that as I add the other ingredients. I'm gonna excuse myself just a moment because I wanna get my silicone spatula and I'm going to add now applesauce. And I learned something today. I suspected it, but I learned it to be so. There are packets, convenient packets of organic, um, unsweetened applesauce that you can buy. And they say four ounces. If you know measurements, one cup is eight ounces. Therefore, four ounces should be um, a half a cup. Well, I measured it. It's not a half a cup. When you buy those cups, it's more like almost a half a cup minus a tablespoon or even a tiny bit more than a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. That can change the results of recipes. And besides, I, I wanted it all that um, the recipe called for. And I'm going by Rebecca's recipe exactly. Um, I'll play around next time by substituting this next ingredient you'll see with something that we'll call more whole food than this. But right now I'm following the recipe. And okay, it's warm enough. That's why I love the Breville oven. It took moments to heat it up. I could use this big thing, but this tiny little bread pan in that, which takes forever to heat, isn't what I wanted to do. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading something on the screen. And, um, okay, so I have the, the well mashed banana. And if you had a less ripe banana, it would be pretty hard to get it to this consistency. It would, it's, looks like a starchy kind of a paste more than that. Okay, then this is the ingredient I'm talking about. A lot of us use maple syrup, some, I'll, I'll say purists would prefer date paste only for sweetening. In other words, a whole food. And date paste is ground up dates with some water. Um, I'm, I'm both ways. I usually use date paste uh, because then the fiber comes along with it and I like that idea. Uh, and the nutrients of dates rather than anything filtered out. But I'm not gonna worry about that. If I were being, I'll say a purist, I would even do this a little differently, but I want this recipe. I want a lighter, fluffier banana bread. And I'll tell you why. I'm having friends come over today for tea. <laughs> this afternoon, I'm having tea with a couple of friends and I'm going to put out my, well, I'll say Chef AJ's recipe I've played with it a little bit, but it's basically her recipe of cram mus muffins, carrot, millet, but I used amaranth flour. Um, what does cram stand for? Cram uh, carrot, millet, apple, and um, M. What was the M? Cram. Oh, well. Anyway, it's it's apples and carrots and, and whole oats and a little bit of millet flour or amaranth flour. In other words, it's very whole food. I'm getting just a massive amount of fiber in that kind of a uh, thing. Carrots are whole but shredded. Apple is whole but um, chopped. Um, you get my picture. They're very rustic. And so I'm gonna serve that, and I wanted something very refined and kind of fluffy, and yet still as whole food as I can get. So we're using a flour rather than whole oats. I'm using the, the maple syrup, which will be a finer texture than um, the date paste. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pause you a minute because I have to grab an ingredient, a major ingredient that I didn't put out. Uh, that's walnuts. Okay. Back to our simple but delicious banana bread. 
you saw that we mixed up the flour with the dry ingredients. You see that I'm doing the moist ingredients now, and that's the banana applesauce, maple syrup. I'm going to put in the rest of the milk that I didn't use for the flax egg. I'm gonna put in the flax egg, but first, I'm gonna show you the difference. Do you see this? That's the idea of a flax egg, and that will add as a work as a binder in a recipe and is a great substitute for an egg and it's whole food plant-based you know the flax offer lots of protein lots of fiber lots of omega-3 fatty acids which are our essential fatty acids and really good for us now there's a delightful addition here, and I'm really pleased about it. And that is a little bit of lemon juice. Isn't that nice? So we'll add some lemon juice. And then there's a interesting thing, and I've baked for, well, I'm 73, so I've baked for a long, long time, considering I think my first cooking class in junior high was, well, what would I have been, 10, 11? Um, Typically, you'll have your moist ingredients, you'll have your flour that you put into it, and you'll then you'll add your nuts and the big chunky things. This is different. This recipe, now, unless I get a clarification or unless I'm not crazy about the results, then I'll retype the recipe and you'll know I wasn't. Um, but the recipe calls for, as it came down from Rebecca, I'm going to do this last little bit of this kind of mixing, and I'll use a big spoon after that. Mmm, that's nice. I'm going to grab my spatula again. The, the, um, but in this recipe, the walnuts, and they're lightly chopped walnuts, they're not finely chopped, they're in... Well, decent sized pieces. If they're too large, it's difficult to chop or to cut the loaf. In other words, you slice and you're either slicing through a walnut that is, doesn't get as easily as the bread or, or you know, whatever. So I have a half a cup of walnuts. You could use any kind of nut. You could use pecan if you liked. Um, what else would make sense? Maybe a hazelnut, toasted hazelnut, but We'll leave all that alone. And then the recipe calls for uh, raisins. You could use black raisins or dark raisins. You could use um, golden raisins. I love using currants because currants taste like a raisin, but they're much, much smaller. And so you get a better representation of that flavor throughout. You have a lot of little currants in a, let's say, muffin or your slice rather than the larger raisins. But remember I said I'm doing a, a tea and I wanted something different, very different than my rustic banana muffins that I'm also serving. And so I decided to, instead of use the currants or the raisins, I'm using chocolate chips. Now these are, they're made by Good Sam uh, it says be an ally for small farms. So there are a small farm. This is no sugar added, dark chocolate baking chips, and they are vegan. Yay! Um, so, but they're also tiny. Here, look. Can you see that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. They're, they're little teeny chips, which I like because, again, I get a better representation. I have these teeny chips throughout. So I am adding them, as I said, I'm, I'm not used to that. I'm adding them to the liquid. And this is one of her go-to desserts. So I know, <laughs> I love it. Okay, and now I'm adding a little at a time of our flour mixture. And mix it in, a little more, and mix it in. This is gonna be so good. A little more, and mix it in.
A lot of recipes for sweets have a little salt in them. If you're not salt sensitive, you could put a little bit of salt, less than a half a teaspoon, but it's not in the recipe and I'm not gonna do it. And there. This is a nice batter. And what she explained is that when the bread comes out of the oven, because the bread's in the oven for 40 to 60, is it 40 to 60 minutes? That's such a span. No, 60 to 70 minutes um, for the bread, and the muffins are 25 to 30 minutes or 35 minutes. Well, she said they, it's gonna look like the crust is very dry, but she said the inside, so don't be worried, but the inside is quite moist. You would still wanna check it because all ovens are different. The way you, you would any time you do a baked good, and that is you could use a toothpick, but in the case of a, a cake, it's not going to go in, or the bread, it's not going to go in that far. So maybe just a thin knife, you put it in and pull it out to see if you see wet batter on it. If you see wet batter, you keep baking. If it comes out, as they say, clean, then you're ready to go. Okay, and you don't want to over whip, over mix any, um, uh, a batter because then especially something that's leavened and this is leavened with baking soda and baking powder you could whip out you'll end up losing a lot of the air that way i have a piece of parchment paper on here to this is a farberware nine by five loaf pan okay and once i start pouring it'll stay open I'm pouring against you because I'm left-handed and I can't work the other way, sorry. Oh man. I'm gonna have to spoon a little of this in to get this to stay, hold on. Well, that's funny. Okay, let me do it this way. There. Okay. There, I can do it this way. And you know, oat flour is just ground whole oat, well, rolled oat. And so you can see here that we're still getting a lot of fiber. It's just, um, by grinding anything, you're reducing the effect of the fiber a bit. You have an oat groat. I eat that every morning for breakfast, oat groats. Then you have steel cut oats. Then you have rolled oats. Then you have um, instant oats. And those were more finely ground. Then you have oat flour. Okay. And I'll show you my little chocolate chips are hanging around on top. And as I said, these are unsweetened chocolate chips. Okay, I think that's it. This is quite a moist batter. Do you see? Okay. I'm going to put it in my Breville oven. I'm going to set it for 60 minutes, not 70. And... 